This is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is the Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham. I surely do not know what episode this is because I think that there's one living on the recorder that I'm recording on and I have yet to decide whether I'm deleting that one uh, or I'm keeping it. So I will make this the nameless one. This is episode question mark, question mark, season six of the Chris Abraham show. Today is all about Emma, Emma Chamberlain. This is a, like the most influential girl or person or human on the entire internet. And I think she might even be more influential and rich and powerful and successful than Mr. Beast. Her name's Emma Chamberlain. And I am the last person to fall in love with her. And by fall in love with her, I do not mean in any way out of passion or desire. I mean, I mean, she's a total uh, little, like, olive oil bean post. Uh, but I love her grit, man. I, out of nowhere, started getting her two-year-old videos when she was 19 all over my For You page on YouTube. Not uh, it's called Recommended. For You, I guess, is more of a more of a TikTok thing. But man, I don't know about now. I think now she's just, I don't know. She's been ruined by 21. But man, when she was like, as far as five years ago, and more like two years ago, she was like, she says this all the time, but she's a little old lady. Like she's a little old lady in a 19 year old body. And it's delightful how uh, tomboyish she is and how uh, self-aware she is and how, uh, fearless and shameless she is, but also how open to being lonely and the, uh, open and frank relationship with her mom and her dad who were divorced and, uh, her tendency to talk about shitting and pooping and IBS and menstruation and talking about her weird food desires when she was younger and have her explore things for the first time. I was just saying to a, a sophomore girl from uh, St. John's who is probably one of the smartest people I currently know and she's studying you know the history of uh, the history of human his, the history of human thought or whatever whatever the amazing degree that they have up at St. John's where they go, basically through the entire Western canon, both historically and philosophically and through literature and at all, Bible study, all that kind of stuff. And she's a sophomore. And I ended up tapping her yesterday and asking her about the controversy with regards to her podcast, where she is waxing philosophical and smart girls are calling her stupid. They're saying that she doesn't have the tools or the words or the edumacation or the experience or the hardening to uh, sit there on her couch in a hoodie yammering into her microphone like I'm doing right now. And, uh, And they're like, girls worth $20 million or more. She is a global self-made jet setter. She hasn't gone to high school since maybe she was 15 or 16. She definitely supports her entire family, I dare say. Um, Her dad seems to be a photographer. Her videographer for a lot of like the things that she has been doing in those videos when she's traveling and so forth. 
Um, and I guess, you know, when she was under 18, he was her, uh, her adult, her escort. But I just love it. I love the devil may care. I love the fact that she is pretty androgynous, androgynous, uh, if you think about it. I mean, she, you know, signifies to me the definition of gamin, which is sort of a young, innocent, playful, uh, flirty, uh, joie de vivre, suffused and infused and super saturated kind of girl at the edge of being adult, an adult. And like, if you were to take, in many ways, she reminds me a lot of my uh, ex-girlfriend. I'll call her my ex-wife because she calls me her ex-husband, Michelle. And even though she grew up, Michelle did, in San Francisco, and I think Emma Chamberlain grew up in, in San Bruno or something, I think that uh, they're both concurrently super, like, uh, like city girls, where they, you just assume, you project on them that they're, like, extremely street smart and maybe a little jaded. But then if you get closer to them, you'll realize that they're just young women, young people, and that young women and young people just don't know shit. And I've spent my entire childhood hiding the fact whenever I didn't know stuff. And I always admired people who look at you blank-faced and blank-eyed and say, I don't know what I'm doing, or I've never done this before, or I have no experience in this, or I don't know what you're talking about, or I don't get the reference, or I've never tasted sushi before. When I found out that uh, Wendy Gottlieb, my elite, elitist, Yale-educated, beautiful, 30-something-year-old uh, goddess of a girlfriend, when I realized that she hadn't had, like, sushi until she was in her 20s, like, it blew my mind, right? It blows my mind uh, to think that there are just lots of things that other people haven't done and haven't been exposed to and don't know innately and haven't figured out on their own through reading or YouTube or curiosity or social media or through friends um, or through books or through podcasts or through reading. It always amazes me to see people who look like they just sort of fell to earth. And to me, Emma Chamberlain feels like, okay, so I have a, a, a friend named Kaushik Sarkar, and he's from Bangladesh, and he is an amazing guy. He's genius, genius uh, IQ, and pretty sure his parents are royalty in, in Bangladesh. But he lives here now, and he works uh, at AWS, and he treats every day here like he's on holiday, right? Because he is. This isn't his home. He sees America as... And as much in much the same way that I saw the entire time I was in Berlin, uh, the way I saw Berlin, like every day was holiday for me. I mean, I tried like heck to work, but every single morning, the I didn't recognize the angle of the sun. I didn't recognize the weather. I didn't recognize the way the air smelled. Um, every day was magical. Every day. I saw something new. Nothing was by rote. Um, I needed to use MapQuest a lot, right? I needed to kind of find my way around. I couldn't wing it or do it intuitively. So I feel like this is kind of a fell-to-earth experience. And I, I get to see that as a third person exposed to someone who isn't, I don't even know if I'm using this word right, who isn't fronting. And by fronting, I mean she in no way is faking it till she makes it. She is exposing her her lack of experience. Uh, she is openly discussing that she sucks at something. Uh, a lot of the episodes, she gets up, walks over to a set of drums, and plays remedial drums in between uh, vlogging rants. It is so delightfully refreshing as a 53-year-old man looking at this, I don't know, she's 
there's not one episode where in any way I've ever objectified her. She's just a, a slender limbed, like, like, like slip of a girl. I, I'm just like, she, she reminds me completely if I were to objectify her as, uh, as like a plastic, uh, a plastic, um, oh, what's the term? Not Madeline, uh, a, a, the thing that, uh, that they put clothes on, on, uh, in stores, a, a mannequin. She seems like a gamine mannequin to me and clothes look amazing on her. Got these ski little tan legs and ski little tan arms and her nails always look really stupid. And eventually she puts on one of those silly nose rings and pierces up her ears. And then you can see her all of a sudden put like what looked like a million little, uh, prison tattoos all over her forearms and and you know what it's fine that's cute too i mean it's so funny to see the evolution right you i think she started when she was 13 14 15 and now she's 21 and every few days uh she records what's going on in her life which seems to be mostly uh reclining in bed checking her phone making iced coffee dicking around the kitchen playing bad drums, trying to get some sun outside, complaining about LA, wanting to go to New York. And then what made me really kind of project myself into her, which is really funny. I've allowed myself to do that thing where in um, movies and television and books and comic books, they try to make the protagonist into like an every man or an every woman where the people who watch it can kind of insert themselves into that into that position uh so that they can kind of become the character themselves and and by proxy have that romantic or interesting experience and what she what she does which i find something that i totally do whenever i go somewhere is i don't like being a tourist i like saying to myself i'm going to spend the next you know five days just pretending to be a local i mean Obviously, you know, I'm not a local and there's no way I could be a local and I'm sure I'm spotted as an American almost immediately or from not being around here um, for whatever reason, for a million reasons. But I like just meandering. And, you know, when you meander, you might miss entire swaths of an experience if you didn't take a proper tour or carry around a guidebook or... But you also open yourself up to the beautiful serendipity of the world right god there's like literally hammering going on and i wonder if that adobe sound cleaner will be able to do a good job so anyway this girl emma chamberlain is just is fantastic and she's i i'm not part of the comments i'm not part of the culture i'm not a thrift store person if you know me uh my only plumage is in my bags uh, the rest is all black t-shirts and jeans and Blundstone boots or Pegasus shoes or uh, various types and sundry types of sweatpants or sweatshorts. And, uh, you know, my Filson boiled wool shooting jacket and those kinds of things. But other than that, like, I do not have the desire to go around and, and being a being literally a tanned skinny little mannequin means that anything that she buys uh looks good on her right like that's why they have mannequins with narrow hips and barely a bosom and flat little little flanks and uh she looks good in everything but it's really funny you know it's like it's like uh whatever that show is someone in paris it's like the ability to be that girl who gets plucked out of nothing and discovered and Louis Vuitton and uh, all the different designers, right? Going to the, uh, the Met Gala and being brought in to model and being brought in to have a coffee company and then being brought in to be the face of Warby Parker and then to have uh, a Warby Parker pair of glasses named after you, a line of glasses named after you. I mean, this is total, 
like Netflix or Hallmark or whatever, like like a huge fantasy play. And um, and so she is really just a vessel. In many ways, she's just a placeholder. She's just an exemplar. I mean, I can see with her, you know, her bright face and her willingness to go ahead and talk about anything and burp and she doesn't have a girly voice. She's got a, a loud kind of brash, kind of husky voice at even 16 and 17 and a loud voice and she takes up space and she demands space and she demands attention. I mean, this is a kind of like, like I say, search up, search the word gamine. G-A-M-I-N-E. Like, it's not, it's not a negative term, and it's not really a sexualized term. It's like more of a, I wouldn't say androgynous, but, uh, but it, it's totally, it's totally Emma Chamberlain. She's the definition of an L.A. gamine. Uh, gamine usually refers to kind of tousle-haired um, young girls who are at the precipice of, of, womanhood but not not like a maiden not like a milkmaid more of a boyish puckish quality more of a uh like i said uh not a tomboy but like not even not even uh gender fluid but kind of i don't know uh so and you know if you're a snob you're gonna hate her like if there's any snobbiness you will know right away because you will freaking hate this girl. Uh, I sent, I, I kind of professed my like of her to my buddy Mark, who is who is a shamelessly self-proud uh, snob, like a complete snob. I don't even know why I'm one of his best friends, but he is a snobby McSnob face, and he hates her. Like, just in the little connection that I, I made to her, he finds her vile and 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 perverse and and um uh what is the term uh uh gauche uh not meaning left but meaning like gauche like like de classe right like everything about her from her from her talking about pooping and her forced burps and her slouching at tables while she eats with her elbows on the table and her brass loudness and her self-involvement and all this other stuff uh just appalls him it makes him so sad to be part of the same species as she is and that's when i knew that she was special so i think she's awesome and i think you should check her out too especially if you're my demographic which is like 50 to 100 anyway i will talk to you soon mahalo Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.